In the space of a single instant, he can see a thousand honored Buddhas. He knows a thousand Buddhas' spiritual powers. He is able to know the powers of spiritual penetrations of a thousand Buddhas. He can quake a thousand worlds. At that time, he is able to make the great earth tremble in six ways. He doesn't just quake one world, but a thousand worlds, up to and including being able to make appear a thousand bodies. Although this Bodhisattva is one person with one body, nonetheless, he can manifest a thousand bodies, and with each and every body being able to make appear a thousand Bodhisattvas, acting as his retinue. He makes a thousand Bodhisattvas manifest, acting as the retinue for each one of his bodies. If he uses the most supreme vow power of a Bodhisattva, should he make use of the most supreme merit and virtue of a Bodhisattva, and the power of vows, then his manifestations of self mastery surpass that number. In a very free and easy way, his manifestations surpass. The thousands mentioned above, so that in a hundred compass, a thousand compass, up to and including a hundred thousand million nayutas of compass, they could not be counted or known. One could never say how many there were at that time. Vada Treasury Bodhisattva, wishing to restate his meaning, spoke verses saying, "The proper and upright mind, and the compliant and yielding mind." Along with the mind capable, able to endure, the tamed and subdued mind, the still and quiet mind, and the completely good mind, also quickly leaving birth and death, which is the unmixed and unscattered mind, and the mind with no hankering or yearning, a vast, great intent, the vast mind, and the great mind he uses those ten eyes to enter the second ground. With those ten kinds of minds, he can certify to the fruit, fruit positions of the ground of living fields. Sutra dwelling in this, he accomplishes the merit and virtue of precepts. He leaves far behind overtaking life, and does not vex or harm. He is also free from stealing and from deviant sex, from lying, harsh, perverse, defensive. Kinds of meaningless talk, commentary, dwelling in these means in the ten kinds of profound minds: the proper and upright mind, the compliant and yielding mind, the mind able to endure, the tamed and subdued mind, the still and quiet mind, the completely good mind, the unmixed and unscattered mind, the mind with no hankering or yearning, the vast mind, the great mind. That is the same thing as dwelling in the second ground, the ground of living filth. The important thing is that it is essential to have those ten kinds of minds to enter the second ground, and so you can interpret it either way. He accomplishes the merit and virtue of precepts. You have to hold the precepts in order to enter the ground of living filth. If you don't hold the precepts, you won't be able to enter the second ground of living filth, because you will not be able to leave your filth. You won't be able to get out of the dirt because you don't hold the precepts. Didn't it say before that among the four dharmas of attraction, he stresses kite was, and that among the ten paramitas, he stresses the paramita of holding precepts. That's why he. Accomplishes the merit and virtue of precepts within the ten minds. He leaves far behind all taking life. How does he leave far it far behind? Is by not killing at all. Not killing is to leave it far behind. Because he doesn't take life, he doesn't undergo the two kinds of retribution. The first of which is having a short life, dying a few days after being born. Or after a few months or years, nor does he have the second kind of retribution of having many illnesses, always being sick, having one disease after another. Any of you who are always getting sick should return the light, look within ourselves, and say, "It's because in the past I took too many lives, so now I'm always sick." 
if you don't kill, you won't get ill because you protect life. If you cherish the lives of other living beings, you will have the rewards of a long life and freedom from illnesses. You won't get sick. So no matter who you are, take a good look at yourself. He leaves killing far behind and does not fix or harm. You shouldn't kill and you shouldn't travel or hurt other living beings. Don't deliberately make trouble for, the, for beings. Don't make them become afflicted or unhappy. He is also free from stealing. He doesn't steal either. If you steal, there are two retributions as well. The first is being poor and the other is having your wealth held in common with someone else. You are poor, have no money because you always took away other people's and so now you yourself have none. That is your punishment, your retribution. The second retribution is having your wealth in common with others. Although the money is your own, other people tell you what to do with it. They control it, you don't. It belongs to other people as well as you. Or it may be that you have money and then it is taken over for communal use. And from Devin sex. Devin sex means illegal sexual relations between men and women. Sexual relations not sanctioned by law. If someone is not your legal wife or husband, you may not have sexual relations with that person. If you do so, then you violate the precept against Devin sex. What happens then? You yourself will have a husband or wife who will not follow the rules, will not act the way a wife or husband should. That is, your wife or husband will seek out lots of other people and have sexual relations with them. Why will that happen? It's because you yourself in the past violated the precept against sexual misconduct. That's the first retribution for it. The second retribution is that your family or circle of friends will not be harmonious. You won't get along with each other. From lying, harsh, perverse, divisive kinds of meaningless talk. This means false speech, telling, telling lies, harsh speech, loose speech, speech that is not in accord with drama and divisive speech. Meaningless talk is speech that is not in accord with principle. These are included in the ten evils. If you violate these ten kinds of evil karma, then you will not have the ten kinds of wholesome karma and you will fall into the three evil destinies. You may fall among the hungry ghosts, into the hells or be an animal and it is not known how long you will have to stay in those three evil destinies before you can escape from them. Sutra, he has no greed for wealth and things always kind and sympathetic of proper ways and upright mind. He has no flattery or deceit. He is free from cruelty, price renounced. He is ultimately subdued. He practices as he has been taught and is never liked. Hell beings and animals undergo a master suffering. Hungry ghosts are on fire and give off a raging blaze. All of this occurs because of their offenses. I should take them out to dwell in actual dramas among people as, his, as he pleases. He undergoes birth up to heaven's summit, the bliss of Diana's Samadhi, paths up long enlightened self healers and Buddha vehicles are all brought about because of the ten goods. In that way, he reflects and is never lax. He himself holds pure precepts and teaches others to protect them. He further sees the flocks of beings, receiving many sufferings, and he even more increases his great compassionate mind to aid them. Commentary He has no greed for wealth and things, always kind and sympathetic. People who cultivate the way should not be greedy for wealth and possessions and should always have a kind of sympathetic attitude towards living beings of proper ways and upright mind. They should cultivate the eight proper paths, proper views, proper thought, proper speech, proper action, proper livelihood, 
proper vigor, proper mindfulness, proper samadhi. One should always cultivate the eight proper ways and have an upright mind. The straight mind is the way place. You should use an upright mind to cultivate the way. He has no flattery or deceit. He doesn't play up to the rich or look down on the poor. That is something that should not be done. Nor is there anything phony or dishonest in what he does. He is free from cruelty, price renounced. He is ultimately subdued. He is not evil, not cruel at heart, and he is given up his conceit. His mind is very compassionate, very compliant and agreeable. He practices as he has been taught and is never lax. One should cultivate according to the teachings spoken by the Buddhas and one must never be lax and fail to follow the rules. To be lax means not to follow the rules and not to be lax means follow the rules. Hell beings and animals undergo a master suffering. The retribution undergone by beings in the house and by brute beasts entails all kinds of sufferings. Hungry ghosts are on fire and give off a raging blaze. The hungry ghosts are always being scorched by fire, by raging flames, and it's very difficult to bear. All of this occurs because of their offenses. It's because of having created offenses that one undergoes all of the evil retributions in the three evil destinies. I should take them out to dwell in actual dharmas. I should help all of those living beings in the three evil destinies to escape from them and reside in true and genuine dharmas. Among people as he pleases, he undergoes birth. Wherever he wants to be born among people, he can be born. Up to heaven's summit, the bliss of Dhyana Samadhi. He can be born in the very highest heave, heaven, the summit of existence, having the happiness of the four Dhyanas and the four stations of emptiness, paths of long, enlightened sound hearers, and Buddha's Buddha vehicles to successful conclusion are all brought about because of the ten goods, those accomplishments are all because of having cultivated the ten good kinds of karma. In that way, he reflects and is never lax. When he hits the things that way, he is not remiss. He himself holds pure precepts and teaches others to protect them. He himself receives and maintains pure precepts and he also teaches other people to protect and hold the pure precepts. He further sees and flocks of being receiving many sufferings. He also sees living beings undergoing all kinds of bitterness, and he even more increases his great compassionate mind to aid them. This makes him even more kind and more greatly compassionate in his thought to teach and transform living beings. Sutra, those common stupid with divine wisdom, who do not properly understand constantly cling to their hatred and do much arguing and fighting. In their state of greedy seeking, they know no satiation. I should cause them to eradicate all of the three poisons, fettered and covered by the great darkness of stupidity. They enter paths of great danger and nests of divine views. In the care of birth and death by hatred, they are detained. I should cause them to disperse the demonic thieves. Commentary Compared to the way people think, the thinking of hungry ghosts is not proper or correct. The thinking of animals is also stupid, and the way the ordinary people think is stupid too. We imagine that we are thinking very correctly, but from the vantage point of searches, we are completely upside down and unable to have proper knowledge and proper views. And so it says, those common stupid with divine wisdom who do not properly understand. Common ordinary people are stupid and due to their stupidity, they have divine knowledge and divine views. Since they lack proper knowledge and proper views, their understanding is inaccurate. They constantly cling to their hatred and do much arguing and fighting. They are always thinking thoughts of hatred and dislike. 
they hate this person, they can't stand that person, and it never ends. It's always as if they were suing someone in court, debating a lawsuit with people, arguing their case. In their state of greed-seeking, they know no situation. Ordinary people are also greedy without situation. They never know how to be content. The sole reason for fighting and enmity in the world is that people are unable to be content with what they have. If people could be content, they wouldn't fight or argue with other people, as it is said. If you know how to be content, then you will always be happy. If you can be patient, you will naturally be at peace. If you have not how you know you know how to be content, then you will always be content. If you don't know how to be content, then you'll never be content. There is greed for status or greed for wealth and jewels or kinds of things that have value, the states of wealth and possessions. They never have enough of them. There is no time when they are satisfied. I should cause them to eradicate all the three poisons. The Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth says, I should make a vow to cause living beings who are like that to become free from greed, from hatred, and from stupidity. I should cause them to expel those three poisons. Fettered and covered by the great darkness of stupidity, why is it people do improper and incorrect things? It is due to the great darkness of stupidity, to ignorance which fetters entangles and blocks them. They enter paths of great danger and nests of devil views. They go along highly dangerous roads and enter into the nests of devil views. In the cage of birth and death, by hatred, they are detained. We keep being born and dying over and over again, and we never get our freedom. We can't say that we were very clear about what was going on when we were born. Not that we understand very much when we die, that we know how we come and how we are going to go. Which is just to know how we were born and how we are going to die. We don't know, nor do we look into this. Birth and death are like a cage and a jail that limit our freedom. It is hatred and enmity which keeps us from being free. I should cause them to disperse the demonic thieves. The Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth says, I should now on the ground of living filth says, I should now help those living beings to quell the demonic bandits to overcome the six hateful thieves which are the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind.